Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this lesson. Today I am going to discuss on the topic Glimpses of India which is written by Lucio Rodriguez. This story is divided into three parts narrating different stories representing the diversities of India. So here I begin and before that let me ask you have you subscribed to my channel if you have not subscribed up till now then please do and watch the video till end and press the like button if you have liked it also don't forget to press the bell icon for my latest notification and leave a comment below so children let us start with this beautiful lesson for my CBSE class 10's children glimpses of india which consists of three different stories the first story is a baker from goa secondly its second story is the story about kurk and the third story is from tea from assam all these three stories are given are giving us a brief view or a glimpse of india telling us about the diversity of india about the beautiful culture about the different perspectives so the title is justified so the first so my first story is a baker from india which is written by lucio rodriguez this is a very interesting story in which you will come to know about the culture of goa when it was ruled by portuguese due to this reason the people of goa are swayed by the portuguese culture at that time baking was the conventional profession of the people of goa and bakers were known as padders there we call bakers as those person who bakes cakes cookies and bread so in goa these bakers are very famous uh, that is they are very popular quite popular so here in goa the famous loaves of bread which were baked in large furnaces were eaten by them so these loaves of bread was a part of their culture and eaten by them so today also if you go there these loaves of bread are available there so the author shares his experience about the goan culture loaves of bread the bakers whom we call padders and the little children now before starting the story let us first of all know about the author lucio rodriguez The author of the story Lucio Rodriguez 1916 to 73 he was born in the year 1916 and died in the year 1973 was a great konkani essayist he wrote several articles in English and konkani to various periodicals and magazines subtle humor and informal narrations are the essential features to his writings which seemed as if he is communicating with us this is a very good quality as it connects you with your writing a baker from goa revolves around the relevance of bakers in the goan culture which dates back to those times when portuguese ruled over the city of goa over there importance is given to the bakers and today also they hold an important position that is why the name of the story is a baker from goa as we are going to read about the baker from goa now the story a baker from goa this is a pen portrait of a traditional goan village baker where pen portrait means 
a pen portrait is an informal description about a person or a group of people baker who still has an important place in his society children listen to the story very carefully our elders are often heard reminiscing nostal nostalgically where reminiscing nostalgically means thinking fondly of the past about those good old portuguese days the portuguese and their famous loaves of bread where the author says that his ancestors used to feel very happy by thinking about their past that is about the culture about the loaves of bread etc those eaters of loaves might have vanished but the makers are still there we still have um, amongst us the mixers the molders and those who bake the loaves where loaves means a quantity of bread that is shaped and baked in one piece and usually sliced before being eaten vanished here means to disappear suddenly and completely molders means a person who molds dough into a shape so it means to say that those eaters means the portuguese are no more existing here in goa but they have vanished or disappeared but the people of goa still eat those loaves of bread by cutting them into pieces and the makers that is the mixers the molders and the bakers are still there those age old times tested furnaces still exist the fire in the furnace has not yet been extinguished the thud and jungle of the traditional bakers bamboo heralding has a rival in the moving in the morning can still be heard in some places where furnaces means an enclosed structure in which materials can be heated to a very high temperature extinguished means cause a fire to cease to burn third and jingle means make or cause to make a light metallic ringing sound heralding means announcing so it means that though po- portuguese have left goa but still today we can find the furnaces the mixers the molders the bakers the thud and the jingle sound can still be heard today and tell us about the arrival of these bakers for selling their bread maybe the father is not alive but the son still carries on the family profession these bakers are even today known as padders in goa during our childhood in goa the baker used to be our friend companion and guide he used to come at least twice a day once when he set out in the morning on his selling round and then again when he returned after emptying his huge basket so the author says that these peddlers or the bakers were seen two times in a day firstly when their basket was full of bread for selling them in the morning and secondly after selling all the loaves of bread when their basket was empty they were returning back to their home so these were the two times when they could be seen by the people the jingling third of the bamboo woke up from sleep and we ran to meet and greet them why was it so was it for the love of the loaf not at all the loaves were brought by some paskin or pastime the maid servant of the house we jingling means make or cause to make a light metallic sound ringing sound and thud means 
allow dull socrates metallic so the author says that the children ran not because of their love for the loaves of bread but and these were purchased by the other person like Bernstein, Paskin, Bastine or the maid servant. What me longed, what we longed for were those bread bangles where which we choose carefully. Sometimes it was sweet bread or special meat. Where bangles means here it refers to the bread in the shape of a bangles called cone gun. So the author says that the children longed for the bangles shaped bread so they ran out of their house when the bakers came in the morning. They used to love they used to love the sweet bread known as bangles and that is why they used to run to buy those bread. The baker made his musical entry on the scene with the jung jung sound of his specially made bamboo staff. One hand supported the basket on his head and the other bangled the bamboo on the ground. He would greet the lady of the house with good morning and then place his basket on the vertical bamboo. We kids would be pushed aside with a mild rebuke and the loaves would be delivered to the servant where staff means stick and rebuke means an expression of disapproval or a scolding. So the children used to get uh, the scolding when they used to gather around the baker as the ladies used to buy the bread where children had nothing to do. So they were asked to go away and leave. But we would not give up. We would climb a bench or the parapet and peep into the basket somehow. I can still recall the typical fragrance of those loaves, loaves for the elders and the bangles for the children, where paraffin means railing or a low protective wall. Fragrance means the scent, bangles refers to the round shape of the bread in the shape of a bangles called cone gun, but the children never gave up and tried to see the bakers by climbing on the bench or a paraffin to see into the basket in which the loaves of bread was kept. The narrator says still he could smell the fragrance of the loaves of bread brought by the baker. The loaves of the bread was eaten by the elders and the bangles were eaten by the children. The, the, there we did not even to brush. Then we did not even to brush our teeth or wash our mouth properly. And why should we? We would take the trouble of plucking the mango leaf for the toothbrush. And why was it necessary at all? The tiger never brushed his teeth. Hot tea could be could wash and clean up everything so nicely after all. So the children were so fond of bread that even without brushing their teeth, they would rush to eat the, lo the loaves of bread and bangles. They said, who would do so much, do, uh, so much of labor in plucking the mango leaves to brush the teeth? The mango leaves are having some dental properties, so it is beneficial to brush with it. Nowadays, we are having toothbrush to brush our teeth. But previously, in olden days, toothbrush was not available. So, they used to brush with the mango leaves. But the children said, why was it necessary to brush our teeth? Then, it, make, it made a comparison that the tiger never brushes its teeth. So why should we brush our teeth? They behave, they behave that if we drink hot, they believe that if we drink hot tea, then our mouth would be washed very nicely. 
Marriage gifts are meaningless without the sweet bread known as the bowl, where bowl means the soft bread and as large as a serving dish. Just as a party or a feast, where feast means the large meal, typically a celebrate, celebratory one, loses its charm without bread. Not enough can be said to show bowl important how important a baker can be for a village. The lady of the house must prepare sandwiches on the occasion of a daughter's engagement. So, the author says that the elders used to eat loaves, the children ate bangles, and now the third type of bread was the bowl, bread which was given as a gift in marriage, party, and feast, as it was not given as, as if it was not given, then it was meaningless. So, this shows the importance of bakers. It was the duty of the lady of the house, that is, the mother said, mother had to prepare sandwiches on the occasion of her daughter's engagement. So, this shows the importance of the baker, that without baker, nothing would be possible. No celebration would take place. Cakes and bowly and ball in has where bo where bolin has means another name for coconut cookies are a must for the Christmas as well as other festivals. Thus, the presence of bakers, furnaces, where furnace means enclosed structure in which the materials can be heated to a very high temperature in the village is absolutely ne essential, necessary. So, in other festivals like Christmas, cakes and bolines had great importance. Now children, see bolines are the another name for coconut cookies. So, the baker's furnaces in the village was necessary. So, even the baker's and furnace was very important and essential to be in the village. The baker or the bread seller of those days had a peculiar dress known as kabai. It was a single piece long frock reaching down to the knees. In our childhood, we saw bakers wearing a shirt and trousers, which were sweaters than which were shorter than the full length ones and longer than the half pants. So, during the rule of Portuguese, the bakers used to wear a dress called kabai, which was like a long frock. But when the narrator was small, he saw bakers wearing a shirt and a trouser, which was the attire of the baker. Even today, anyone who wears who wears a half pant which reaches just below the knees invites a comment that he is dressed like a padder. The baker usually collected his bills at the end of the month. Monthly accounts used to be recorded on some walls in pencil. Baking was indeed a profitable profession in old days. The baker and his family never starved. Where starved means suffer or die or cause to suffer or die from hunger. So, the narrator says that even today when the attire of half pant which reaches just below the knees and a shirt is seen, then it is immediately recognized as a baker. Like, for example, we see someone wearing a red and a white sari, we say it is a Bengali sari. The baker collected his bills at the end of the month from every home. They used to record the monthly account on the wall, as at that time there was no paper available and it was not very comfortable for them. Baking is a very profitable profession at that time in Goa and they never starved. He 
he and his family and his servants always looked happy and prosperous their plum physic was a open testimony to this even today any person with a jackfruit like physical appearance is easily compared to the baker where plum physic means pleasantly fat body open testimony means public statement about a character or quality and jackfruit refers to a very large edible fruit of the jackfruit tree so as they were prosperous so they seemed to be happy and their physique also was also a witness to their happiness so children this is the end of the chapter let us see the story in short what have you learned so we have learned in this chapter that goa is very much influenced by the portuguese their traditional work can be still seen there the portuguese were famous for preparing the loaves of bread we can come across the bakers of bread the writer tells us about the childhood days in goa his childhood days in goa when the baker used to visit their friend he used to visit the house twice a day in the morning his jingling sound of the bamboo woke them up from sleep they all ran to meet him so the author has shown the importance of bakers the variety of the loaves of bread baked by him which is even today found in goa the loaves were purchased by the maid servant of the house the villagers were much fond of sweet bread known as bol the marriage gifts were meaningless without it so the baker's furnace in the village was the most essential thing the lady of the house prepared sandwiches on the occasion of her daughter's engagement in those days the bread seller wore a particular dress known as kabai so the narrator has given the importance of the bread in all occasion the dress which they wore at that time of portuguese rulers was called kabai it was a single piece long frock up to the knees even today they can be seen wearing a half pant that reaches just below the knees people usually comment that he is dressed like a padder baking was profitable profession in the old days the baker and his family never starved and they looked happy and prosperous so dear children with these words i end my lesson do like share and subscribe my channel and leave a comment below hope this lesson will be beneficial for you in your studies thank you